I actually look at them as blessings because without experiencing the dark, the negativity, the abuse, I don't think that you fully appreciate the light and the goodness and all the positive things that can come your way. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the show. Great to have you here. If this is your first time, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And if you've supported the show for any length of time, you know what you're in for. And thank you very much for your support. I've been reading your feedback and knowing that the show is making a difference for you is making a great deal of difference for me. So thank you very much for your support. Now, on today's show, I have the pleasure of welcoming award-winning and celebrated author, speaker and educator, Dr. Marnie Hill Federaro. Welcome to the show. Oh, hi, Rick. Thank you so much for having me here. It's absolutely my pleasure. Now, you and I are going to talk about the impact of changing careers, the importance of finding and following your passion, and how to work through past trauma to live your best, most productive life. But uh, I think it's important, especially given the conversation we've had uh, offline, to share with the audience where you're calling in from today. Oh, sure. I'm calling in from the Caribbean. Oh, beautiful. So uh, for the last three years, I've been living in St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, but originally, I'm from the Chicago suburbs. Fantastic. Now, uh, we'll obviously take a deep dive into what inspired you to move there. But tell us a little bit about that environment. In actual fact, uh, I believe you're the first one on the My Future Business Show, given that we're a global audience, to come in from the Caribbean. Yeah, no, it's just, it's a beautiful place. Um, you know, I decided to move to paradise after retiring from a wonderful career, a uh, 35 year career as a high school special ed teacher. Uh, 12 of those years, I was an adjunct graduate school university professor. And, uh, you know, when I made that career change, I was also making a very big life change. And, you know, I, I, was fortunate enough to be able to choose where I wanted to live. And um, there were many different places that I was considering, but um, the Caribbean won. So here yeah, I wow. am. Yeah, wow. And that was obviously a, a matter of choice for you, but what was, I guess, the, I guess the, uh, the motivation to move? Well, you know, I, w I was leaving a lifetime in the Chicago suburbs. Mm -hmm. I actually left a, a fairly toxic, marriage mm -hmm. um, after 27 years so it was a very big change and you know at at one point after I kind of escaped that situation I realized I had lost everything the house the the money you know even adult children to parental alienation I really had to kind of reevaluate my entire existence and um and you know, during that time, I really started on my healing journey, and um, and that involved changing careers, like we we you sort of mentioned. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm an author, yep. um, but I really wanted to just be true to my own values and my own interests and passions, and you know, found that I really wanted to be surrounded by the beautiful ocean and the sun. And, you know, I've always enjoyed different uh, cultures. And actually, even though it's the United States and I was, it's a territory, it really is kind of a different culture here on the island. And, and so I was very fortunate enough to, you know, be able to have that choice and make that move. Thank you very much for sharing insights into your life. I'm sure this is going to be a, a wonderful call. Now, when you yeah. have some time to just whittle away, what do you like to do with yourself? Well, I mean, I, I love to write. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I really have found that writing has become just a part of me. And, um, and I've always enjoyed reading and uh, just putting words together and, and the meanings of it all. I even dabbled in uh, with my la latest um, book series. I have a five book series um, entitled True Deceit, False Love, where I even dabble in poetry, acrostic poetry and free verse poetry. Mm. So I really enjoy doing that. But of course, I take advantage of everything and anything that this beautiful island has to offer. So I am 
you know, swimming and snorkeling in the ocean. Oh, you know, yes. I'm going on hikes. I'm exploring the rainforest. Uh, there, there's, it's never a dull moment here. So I, I keep myself busy with a lot of that. We have a lot of uh, aspiring authors on the show and having written a book myself, I know that it is one heck of a journey to get to that moment where you've actually published your book, let alone a series of books. Can you take us yeah. back to that very first time and t talk us through the process and I guess the feeling that you had when you finally finished that last word of the page? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, <laughs> I don't think you ever have feel like you're finished. No. Even when you put that last word on the page, there's always editing and re-editing. And even after your book is published, you can always look and say, gosh, I should have said this, or I would have liked <laughs> to have said that. So I, I don't know that I have that exact same kind of closure. Mm. Um, but I, you know, before I moved to the Caribbean, I, I actually had to have a garage sale. I was leaving a beautiful home um, that I thought was paid off for. I thought I would be living the rest of my days there, mm -hmm. but that wasn't the case. And so um, I did have to have a garage sale um, like a yard sale or a trunk sale, whatever people call it, different things. Mm -hmm. And actually at that garage sale, even though it was a very um, bittersweet experience, mm -hmm. um, I was just filled with love and happiness and gratitude. And um, when I was experiencing these deep feelings um, that really could have been negative, but they just weren't. And I'm, I, I'm a very positive, happy person. So it kind of, it would have been unlike me to be, to, even though I, I was uh, faced with a lot of challenges, negative mm -hmm. challenges, you know, I've always just handled them in a positive way. But I actually had some, some miracles, some experiences that were just um, very hard to explain from just, you know, uh, my normal experiences. They were very spiritual in nature. And it prompted me on a quest to do a lot of research about spirituality and near-death experiences and spiritually transformative encounters. And um, just to try to make sense of what I experienced, and I was so um, moved by what I experienced, I was compelled to write about it. Mm. And so the first book that I ever wrote was called God Came to My Garage Sale. What a name. And, That's a fantastic and actually, name. <laughs> yeah, and it was actually endorsed by James Redfield, yes, who I wrote noticed. The Celestine Prophecy and the 10th insight, um, he found value in what I was writing. He also, as an author, has a background of writing spiritual fiction. So, you know, definitely inspired by real events and true experiences, um, but written in a way that could maybe reach a wider audience. And so that book, I was just compelled to write that book. So even before I left the Chicago suburbs, I had that book pretty much um, written. And I, you know, I, I used my teacher background, my education background to kind of organize, because uh, I didn't know how to write a book. <laughs> um, I certainly had a lot of books on how to write a book, but I didn't feel like reading them. I really wanted to get into writing. Just right. Yeah. So, so, but I organized myself in a way um, knowing the different experiences I wanted to write about and then different things I wanted to incorporate under each of those kind of chapters, if you will. They're like vignettes. And, um, and so by the time I got here to the Caribbean, I, after settling in, which was just so very exciting, you know, to, to move to paradise. Mm -hmm. um, I, live, I live on many acres in the rainforest and, you know, just... Um, had a, just a great opportunity to start fresh and and um so it was very exciting but i also just spent a lot of time writing too and and getting that book in order and it was published in september of 2019 and it ended up winning the 2020 best books award which was actually a, a surprise to <laughs> me but but it was also um encouraged me to to keep going and so i remember that that was a really good feeling just knowing that i had had a book that 
you know, other people really enjoyed reading and, you know, so much so that it won an award or got the, the endorsement of, you know, a, a, an amazing author that I have admired for years. Um, you know, it really gave me a boost of confidence. Yes. And, uh, and that started me on my writing journey. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing because I know a lot of people, that's the biggest thing, isn't it? Making that start. So if anybody's on the call today listening to this, um, take some notes because we're going to be sharing some um, amazing content as we work our way through the call. Now, I think for context, given that you are such a positive light in the world, um, f for that context, I'm wondering if we can go back um, to your childhood. Where did you grow up? You know, I grew up in the northern north north northern suburbs, I guess it would be called the North Shore mm -hmm. of Chicago. So I grew up in a town called Lake Forest. Um, and I I was um, it was a beautiful place to grow up. Although I was always um, within me wanting to get out of Lake Forest. I was always <laughs> wanting to just kind of um, grow up before my time. Before time. You know, I left high school at an early age, started college early. I was very anxious to, you know, be independent and make it on my own. And I think some of that has to do with, um, you know, my upbringing with, with my parents. Um, later on, after I realized I was in a toxic, narcissistic, abusive relationship yes when i started to do the inner work which is very much needed when you find yourself you know in these situations you know you need to ask yourself what made me a target for for this, this kind of experience mm. when really i just wanted to live happily ever after and you know just had this this fairy tale american dream that yep. you know i i was trying to make come true and uh stuck it out for a very long time. But in the process of trying to make sense of what's happened, you have to kind of go back to your childhood and 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 put the puzzle pieces together and, and connect the dots to, you know, did you experience inter, you know, intergenerational family trauma? And it turns out, I believe I did. Yeah. And, you know, um, I, I didn't know it at the time, of course. I mean, I didn't know any better. Um, I did know that my upbringing was a little bit different than a lot of my um, classmates or neighbors because I was extremely independent. There wasn't necessarily a lot of structure at home. We didn't have like a set dinner time like, mm -hmm. like some neighbors did. And, you know, um, but some of that was a wonderful thing. I think some of that um, kind of hands-off parenting that my parents did mm -hmm. um, kind of made me into the person that I am as well. So I don't look at things as all bad or all good. I mm -hmm. look at it like they all contribute to making you who you are. And so even though I can look back and say, okay, this parent had some narcissism you know, had some traits and yeah, I seemed to be alienated from this parent, but then the other parent also did some of that alienation. I don't know. It's, it's, I've started to put the pieces together in my sixties, you know, yeah, so, wow. um, it does take a long time for, for, for you to kind of come to terms with everything that, you know, you've been through and what makes you who you are, but you know, I, I look at even people that have been abusive in my life, I actually look at them as blessings because without experiencing the dark, the negativity, the abuse, I don't think that you fully appreciate the light and the goodness and, and all the positive things that can come your way. You can't buy um, experience in life. And I know through our previous conversation just prior to starting the call today that uh, somebody very close to me has been exposed to this narcissistic um, characteristic and not even being aware of it. Now, how was it that you came to be aware that this was what was happening? I, I, I wouldn't know how to, to work out what a narcissist looks like. Well, and I'll tell you, I didn't even know that term no. or any of the terms. 
Um, and I, I think what happens is when you find yourself, you know, you, you try to figure out why do bad things happen to good people? And I look at myself as a good person and, you know, I, I did make some bad choices, I suppose. And, and, and to stay in, in a situation knowing that there were red flags. Um, but I, I kept on believing, okay, well, I made a vow or, you know, it's better for the children if I, if I stay, um, I'll ignore this. And there's a lot of intermittent reinforcement where, you know, there are positive times, good times, and, but then they're mixed with, with real negative mm. times as well. And, and so I think, I think I had to learn that, you know, what gaslighting was, for example, where, you know, and where a normal, accomplished, educated um, person can start to feel like they are not worthy or capable when really they are, but they're made to believe that they're, that, that there's something wrong with them, that they're confused, their memory's bad, you know, um, they don't do things right. They don't wear the right clothes. They don't, you know, a lot of times the narcissists are very, very concerned about their public persona, <laughs> their image of what it looks like. You oh, know, yeah. lots of times these people have very high positions in the community and they love that power and control that they have where, um, and they project this image that they have such integrity when behind closed doors, mm -hmm. that's not really the case. Hmm. So I don't know. I think you have to kind of, you know, look at some of the red flags. And for me to understand this, I had to do a lot of research. I had to look into this. And then actually the first book in my, my five book series mm -hmm. called True Deceit, False Love, the first book is actually 15,555 wow. terms and phrases on domestic violence, narcissistic abuse, mm -hmm. and parental alienation. And how that came to be was through my, my writing down, hey, I don't know what this term means. What does smearing mean? Or what is stonewalling? Or, you know, these different terms that are thrown around when you check out podcasts or read literature, and I didn't know what they meant, so I wrote them down to look them up at a later date. And mm -hmm. before I knew it, I had a hundred terms. And actually, it wasn't much longer, and I had a thousand terms. And then I had 10,000 terms, and I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to stop at some point. <laughs> um, so, I, so I stopped at 15,555, and, and amazingly, this whole series has also been widely endorsed, prominently endorsed by influencers and academics within this abuse recovery community. So, so even the person who wrote my foreword, my introduction, um, who really saw value in what I was doing is Dr. Sam Vaknin. And, you know, he, he actually is a self-proclaimed narcissist. So he is someone that was diagnosed with this um, most most narcissists aren't diagnosed. I no. mean, most of them don't think anything's wrong with them, and it's always someone else. Yeah. Um, but he went so far as to look into getting help for that, and now is teaches on this. He's a professor, and 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 really, um, boy, he does podcasts and interviews daily mm. on various yeah. aspects of narcissism. But he wrote my foreword and, and loves the fact that I didn't make this a glossary or a dictionary of any kind, because really some of the healing um, is connecting the dots to your own experience and, and looking at terms. And of course, there's many different definitions for the terms, but you know, you can, in looking up things, you can really relate it to your own experience and then it has meaning and then then it has healing you know it, it really will help you move forward you must attract a wide uh, range of personality types different age groups um, who have experienced this now i know that there is a lot of hurt when you suddenly feel and recognize that you have been i guess the true victim on the true victim side of this whereas the narcissist by definition, will always play the victim to their friends to keep face. I know Definitely. this. I know yeah. this for a fact. And I, I wonder, 
you know, you're such a positive, vibrant person. Did it hurt? And how do you, how do you suggest that those who are listening to this call, how do they process it when they feel alone oh, and lost? You know, of course it hurts. Mm. And we need to acknowledge our feelings. And, and for me, acknowledging them in writing mm. has helped me just get it out of my body, out of my mind and 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 onto the paper and it kind of is a process to to remove it so you're not stuck with the trauma within ourselves yeah um so that physical act of writing really helped me but of course it hurt and actually you know it's shocking but at, at some point after you know in my case after 27 years of marriage um you know i already i i already knew i i I didn't have respect or yeah. or yeah. really like the person that I I was with. So so actually, um, separating from that person wasn't as bad as I've I've read other people's situations where they're still in love with their abuser. And mm. I, I was not in in love anymore, but I I certainly loved him and. I, I love the idea of being a wife and mother. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, so it was very sad, not so much leaving him. It was shocking. Some of the things he actually confessed to a lot of things one night. And so really within one night, I had so much confirmed for me that I was, um, there was no question it was in my time. mind that I, yeah, there was no question, but I, I was also the next day or the day after, you know, physically threatened and, and, you know, told, no, don't time, you dare divorce me. If you divorce up. me, I will take everything from you. I will take your house, your money, your children. And actually one of the, the toughest, the saddest things, and it's, I still hurt tremendously from this is I'm alienated from my two adult children. Mm -hmm. And, um, one of the children, it's been, you know what eight years already and you know that that is just mind-boggling because you know as a loving parent whether you're a dad or mom to just lose the love and contact with your own children uh, based on lies and half-truths and whatever sense. it is it's it's a smear campaign you know and in extreme cases and mine's pretty extreme alienation mm. Um, that part was extremely sad. Um, and then, of course, talking about the emotions of being sad, it was sad to later on, many years later, to look at my own family situation. And I was, I felt sadness, you know, in that I had experienced some things as a kid. And then having to make some decisions about whether or not to let people back into your life yes. um you know at some point you do need to make a decision even though you might have family ties or friendship ties the best thing to do is is no contact um it's the healthy it can be the healthiest thing and that was a very tough decision oh yeah absolutely. you know another thing i i'll mention here you know it's not always romantic partnerships or family i i realized that a best friend that I had had since I was five years old. So someone, you know, um, over 50 years, you know, that I was close with and believed we were soul sisters, mm -hmm. you know, that our friendship would last forever. I, I, at one point, the same kind of thing, like the mask of the abuser falls off, you know, the, the false, there's deceit there. I found out so much betrayal and deceit and condescension and um, that losing that friendship. And, and that was one that I, I walked away with, with no real closure. You know, no. ideally it'd be nice to say, hey, we need to work on the relationship or I'm going to step back because of this. There was nothing, nothing. like that. I knew that the best thing would just be to walk away. And that was in some ways more painful than leaving a 27 year marriage. 
Yeah, wow, this is very, very powerful stuff. And there'd be a lot of people on this, you know, in tears because, you know, I can feel the emotion. And I'm, I'm hopeful that talking about this is a healing process for you because I guess that uh, I believe that a problem shared is a problem half. So I really, really appreciate you opening up like this. Now, in terms of uh, writing, you have uh, obviously a series of books. Now, what's next? Well, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I do have one more book in me. Actually, my fifth book of the True Deceit False Love series works with terms and phrases as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that is at the publisher now. It'll be coming out in a week or two. Uh, but I do believe I have a sixth book in me. And um, I don't know that much about screenwriting or anything like that, but I believe I want to write a movie. Oh, wow. And I, I, I want to combine my original spiritual fiction along with the family violence and the family trauma, but, but with the message of love and hope and goodness and forgiveness. And, uh, and so I, I do have that in me. I'm certainly thinking about it. And, and in my mind, I'd like to say that, you know, I'm really going to just try to do this within this year. And then I think maybe for 2023, I'll step back from, from all of this, from the interviews, from the writing, and, and just go about the business of living my life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, life is not a dress rehearsal and uh, the curtain closes on all of us at some stage. So you certainly need to enjoy it while it's upon us, don't we? Now, um, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your website and how you came to choose God Came to My Garage Sale as a domain name. What a fantastic domain name. Well, that's the name of my spiritual fiction. So that's mm -hmm. the name of my book. Mm -hmm. I had no idea I would be writing other books. And so I just, you know, I'm not on social media. I just have my website. And so I've organized the website um, that you can read about me as an author. You can read about the people that have endorsed my books and what they had to say about my writing. Um, you can uh, look at the different awards or whatever. That's all on there. But I have a happenings section where I pretty much keep up to date. And not only do I put interviews and book signings and TV appearances and different things that I am involved in, I also use that section as kind of a resource where I highlight other people's work, other people's books. And... And, um, you know, so it's a place where, where people can go to find out how, what I'm doing and what I'm up to. Um, but at the same time, if they want to learn what par parental alienation is, mm. they, they can scroll around and get definitions and get other people's take on, on that kind of thing. So I try to keep that up to date, but yeah, I, I decided to keep my website the same name as my first award-winning spiritual fiction so with the internet being what it is you would obviously have a large reach as as everyone does who is, has a website um are you doing much face to face or is it all predominantly online when you work with people and share your insights oh it's a combination you mm. know of course the last two years you know things have have shifted Tricky. as far as a lot of the in-person activities but you know i just spent three weeks skiing out west in utah oh, and beautiful. and oh i had a wonderful vacation skiing and it was a spa vacation and oh, nice. it was just wonderful to have a change of scenery but i also did an in-person book signing there Excellent. you know so so i i arrange in-person events when i can you know living in the caribbean now i i am not traveling as much mm -hmm. um, but i will get back to that more Fantastic. um so i think i think my events are a combination they're both you know they're online of course with podcasts and that that type of thing but you know i also teach writing workshops i also um like I said, I did just recently had an in-person book signing in Utah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's I'm gonna be also a, a big event that's coming up. Um, I'm going to be in uh, June. 
I am, I was selected by the board of directors of this organization called SAI, which is Spiritual Awakenings International, uh, run by Dr. Yvonne Kaysen. And um, we have connected because of my spiritual experiences mm -hmm. and, and her organization. And, um, and so I've been selected to be a panelist, you oh. know, with, with them in June. So that's, you know, different events are coming up. You know, I, 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 I get asked at least once a week to be on someone's podcast because they, they either like the topic of writing spirituality or just bringing awareness to family trauma. So the best place for you, if you are on this call today, and we've only really touched the surface of uh, Marnie's insight, life experiences, sage advice, call it what you like. It's all very, very valuable content. If you went to uh, godcametomygaragesale.com, you're going to find out every single thing you need to make a connection with Marnie and all of the wonderful work that she's doing. And um, Marnie, again, I have really, really enjoyed speaking with you on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I appreciate, you know, your, this opportunity to highlight my work and to connect with wonderful people like yourself. So thank you. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.